This winter season is rapidly approaching, and with just a few weeks left in meteorological fall, we're already seeing snowpack build over parts of North America, with even more snow on the way this week. However, as we get closer to the start of winter, we're expected to see a shift in global weather patterns that could give way to an abundance of snow for some and a lack of snow for others. So if you're curious about how much snow to expect this winter, stay tuned as we discuss this season's storm setup and how it could shape the winter's forecast. So a few days ago, we got the official forecast from the Climate Prediction Center for meteorological winter. That's December, January, and February. And they've highlighted an area of below average temperatures from the northern plains into the northwest and above average temperatures from the southwest all the way to the southeast and even including the mid-Atlantic and parts of the northeast. And for the precipitation outlook, they've also highlighted a decent portion of the Midwest going into the northern plains and the northwest for above average precipitation. Meanwhile, a lot of the southern tier of the country expect to see below average conditions. But precipitation doesn't just include snow. It also includes sleet and rain. So not all of this is a snow forecast here, but it does give us an idea of where we could potentially see some bigger snows this season. Since the Climate Prediction Center's forecast doesn't give us a direct idea of what we can expect for snowfall this season, and there's still some differences from what we discussed in our previous winter forecast video above, which you can watch here if you haven't watched yet, I go a lot more in depth on what global patterns shape the upcoming winter's forecast, so feel free to watch that. But we will discuss here the differences between the Climate Prediction Center's forecast and ours, and how we can take that information and the information from our winter forecast to gauge how much snow we could actually see this upcoming season. But we're still thinking here that colder than average temperatures are going to be locked in place across a good portion of the upper Midwest, the northern plains, and even going to the northeast. But the reason why there's some differences here is because our winter forecast includes November all the way into early April. At least that's what winter is for a good portion of the northern tier of the U.S. And then we go down to the south where there's a lot of agreement here on seeing above average temperatures, even with the Climate Prediction Center's forecast as well. And one of the main differences here is, of course, we're going to start winter in a La Nina pattern where we'll see some colder than average temperatures from parts of the northern Rockies going into the northern plains as the jet stream remains positioned over that area. Meanwhile, we see above average precipitation in parts of the northwest. So most of that in the higher elevations will be snow. You go downstream, we'll have wetter than average conditions across parts of the Midwest. And then south of the jet is where things remain drier. However, midwinter, we will shift into a Enzo neutral pattern, which will change things quite a bit. We'll see cooler than average conditions work their way over the Midwest and then going into parts of the Northeast even, where we could see some bigger snowstorms develop, especially nor'easters under this pattern. You go to the south and that will be the battle zone where we could see potentially some severe weather as we head towards the later half of winter and even into early winter as well. And then off to the West Coast where things get warm and dry. And that's one of the bigger differences here especially towards the later half of winter as Enso Neutral starts to take shape, we'll start to see these anomalies across the country. You can also see this change in the Climate Prediction Center's forecast of the Enso cycle, which is warmer than average ocean temperatures in the eastern Pacific versus cooler than average. When you have warmer than average, it's an El Nino. Cooler than average, it's a La Nina. And then in between is an Enso Neutral. So we start in La Nina and then gradually shift more towards Enso Neutral, which does have some significant effects on the winter forecast. And we also have the Arctic Oscillation, which we discussed in the previous video, basically controls whether or not the polar vortex will show up through parts of the country. So in a negative AO phase, the polar vortex can come south. In a positive phase, it generally stays up to the north. We'll most likely see the negative phase several times through this winter, and that will allow colder outbreaks to occur. So in a positive phase, this is where the polar vortex tends to hang out. In a negative phase, it comes south, and that's where you can see those colder outbreaks. So with the cold air hanging out across much of the Midwest, we'll expect to see clipper systems form, which are basically called Alberta clippers because they originate in Alberta. They travel across parts of the northern plains, Midwest, and then we'll end up into the northeast. They aren't major snow producers, but we could see several rounds of these as we push into the upcoming winter, and that could factor into the amount of snow that is seen across this area. And we go into the northeast where we could see an above average winter in terms of coastal systems, which means nor'easters most likely in the forecast there. And then across the southern tier of the country, we could see an increase in activity of storm development, which could mean anything from snowfall, but also ice storms and even some severe weather. 
We go off to the West Coast, and that's where we'll most likely see some below average precipitation for the upcoming winter. And that will also include a lack of snowfall potentially, especially in places like the Sierra Nevada. So to put things into perspective for how much snow to expect this winter, we have to look at the average snowfall ahead of time because it varies for different parts of the country where the northern plains, we don't really see quite as much snow as places like the Rockies and the northeast because there's a lack of terrain there. And also it's very far away from bodies of water. So that doesn't allow large systems to really push over those locations and produce a ton of snow. But an above average winter also still means above average, just not quite as much snow as other locations in the Rockies or the Northeast, where an above average winter for those locations could mean hundreds of inches versus 30 or 40 inches of seasonal snowfall. Meanwhile, in the South, just a couple of inches could mean an above average winter of snow for some locations. Now, with all that information factored in, this is what we can expect for snowfall this season. We're expecting above average snowfall for a good portion of the Midwest, Northeast, going into the Northern Plains, and even through parts of the Rockies. This is factoring in the increase in clipper systems through this area and also low pressure systems that will develop and go into parts of the Northeast. The more significant weather systems will also be producing some big snows for parts of the Appalachians where we could see well above average snowfall totals going to parts of New York State into New England and even through parts of Pennsylvania. This will be an increase of nor'easter activity which we are expecting this winter. With the cold air outbreaks factored in, we'll also see well above average snowfall most likely for parts of the UP of Michigan going into Michigan itself and even through parts of Ohio as the lake effect snow machine starts to really ramp up as we head towards the middle of winter. Meanwhile, across parts of the southwest and west coast, this is where we'll most likely see below average snow totals and even well below average snow totals for parts of the Sierra Nevada going through a good portion of California and into Nevada itself. So we have a decent portion of the west coast seeing below average snowfall this season, but we could also see some early season snowfall in this area before the pattern changes. So the winter season isn't a complete loss out here, but you'll want to get your skiing in most likely early this season. If you're also curious to see how this shapes up precipitation wise, this is where we'll most likely see above average precipitation, very similar locations and potentially well above average precipitation in somewhat different locations across parts of the Midwest and then going into the Northeast. But the reason for this is I do think we'll see potentially some ice storms in this area, especially as we head towards the later half of winter, but potentially early winter as well. So this is where we'll see some uncertainty in these locations. Meanwhile, we go off to the South and even through parts of Southern Canada, where we most likely will see some drier conditions. The locations in Southern Canada, because it'll just be a little bit too cold for precipitation, especially through the mid to later half of winter. And then off to the South is where we'll just have drier conditions overall because of the ENSO pattern being an ENSO neutral phase and we could see well below average precipitation in these locations which coincides to below average snow which we just talked about but also in the parts of the southeast specifically Florida northern Florida where you could have some abnormally dry conditions. And speaking of ice storms, these locations have at least a shot at seeing an ice storm this season, a better chance of actually seeing more severe ice storms, potentially for the Ohio Valley, but certainly through parts of Southern Illinois, Missouri, going into parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. This setup just has a decent opportunity of warm and cold air masses colliding in these locations, and that could set the stage for at least a couple of ice storms as we move through the winter season. Since November does bring the first snowfall for a decent portion of the U.S., Let's take a look at temperature for the next month. The Climate Prediction Center is already forecasting above average temperatures for the southwest, but equal chances of cold air across a good portion of the northern plains, going into the Midwest and even through parts of the northeast. We also have above average precipitation for parts of the northern Rockies going into the plains, so we're not seeing a big pattern change quite yet. But with opportunities of cold air and above average precipitation, we could see some snow opportunities for parts of the northern plains and going into the upper Midwest and even potentially into parts of the Northeast with equal chances of cold air and equal chances of precipitation. So as we track winter building into the forecast over the next few weeks, there are still some factors we have to watch closely that could change the winter's forecast, but we're getting more certain as the season approaches. One of those things is the ENSO cycle, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which is warmer than average or cooler than average waters in the Eastern Pacific. This does dictate the overall pattern as we head into winter, which most likely will be going from a La Nina into an ENSO neutral phase as we talked about. We also have the Arctic Oscillation, which in its negative phase will allow the polar vortex to show up over parts of North America. 
And we also have the Siberian snowpack, which does have significant effects on the winter's forecast and especially the Arctic Oscillation as we move into the upcoming winter. In addition to that, we also have effects from the North Atlantic Oscillation, which does dictate where nor'easters will position themselves this season. So if you liked our winter forecast video, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out our previous winter forecast video as we went into detail on global weather patterns and how they shape the overall winter setup. And I will most likely have another winter update as we get closer to the upcoming winter season.